Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this hologram shader that I'm using in this cyberpunk render right here. There's gonna be a full breakdown on the entire render in a couple of days. If you are watching this by then, there'll be a link below. But in this video, I'm just gonna do the hologram shader only, and then that video will cover other stuff. So this is a really fun shader that I like to use to just make emissive objects a lot more interesting. You can put it on pretty much anything, and uh, just a great way to spice up your you know, cyberpunk scenes. So let's get into the video. Okay, so the way I like to do this is I like to start with a model um, that I've usually just downloaded, usually one with more organic kind of shapes and curved surfaces. So statues work great, people work great, hands and like more organic things. But, you know, I did like a can of pop in my render. Like you can do whatever you want. So you might want to start with a model that has a texture as well. And I'll show you where that comes into play with combining it with the emission and all that. It doesn't need a texture, but it's helpful if you have one. It, it can make it look a lot nicer. Okay, so the base of the shader is something that's emissive. So let's just go in here. Let's turn on in your model. You want to just make sure there's no other material slots. If there are, just try and get one kind of universal material on it or pick a different model. So this is kind of a setup that you might find. We have a base color map going into the base color, and then we have a normal map. I'm going to get this the, the normal map just out of the way for now because it's not important to look at. So you can ignore that for now. So on your model, on the principal BSDF that is the main shader of that model, the main material, go into the emission tab and we're gonna use emission here. So the color doesn't matter for now. I'm just gonna turn up the strength. So that's right now glowing, right? If I have a surface around here, you can see it's emitting light. And that's the base of the shader, but there's some things we can do to make it a lot more interesting to look at. The problem with emission shaders a lot of the time is you want it to look cool, but then you turn it up and it just becomes a white, like just a white blob of glowing, whatever. Not what we want. So the way I like to do something that's more fun and interesting with this is by using this node right here, a layer weight. Okay, so we can plug that into the emission strength, actually. There's, there's two ways you can use this. There's the Fresnel output and there's the facing output. There's actually a Fresnel uh, node if you want to use that. I actually like using the layer weight because you get this facing output, which I find usually looks a bit better. Okay, so the way this works is depending on what angle you're looking at the model at, depending on uh, the angle that the faces are facing the camera, you're gonna get more or less output from this node right here. So this is all the node is doing, it's just this black and white output here. And if we run that into the emission strength, we get some parts being more or less emissive depending on the angle we're viewing it at. Okay, so that's fine to start, but there's a lot more we can do to make this interesting. One thing I really like doing is using, is using an image of something that's like techie or code like this. This is just nonsense code. You can go into like a blank document and type out just a bunch of ones and zeros like binary. And you can use that too and just take a screenshot of that and use that as an image texture. I can try and link this exact one below if you want to just use this one from Unsplash. It's just a free stock image. Okay, so I'm going to drag that image, that code image into the shader editor over here. And then I'm going to mix that in with the layer white down here. Let's take a mix color, drop that in right here, and let's just bring in that code image into slot B. I'm gonna switch this over to multiply. Okay, I can actually turn that up to one, and that's what it's doing right now. So, okay, so right now the code image is taking on the same UV map that the rest of this model is using. So the UV map looks like this right now. If we just look at this, it's a complete mess and it's meant to be used with this texture right here, which just has a weird unwrap. I think it's because it's a photo scan and they usually look like this. So not that usable if we want to bring in a second texture. So I could re-unwrap this, but the problem with that is that'll mess up the underlying texture and I want to keep that intact because I like the texture that is appearing on the model already. And if I if I do a cube projection or something, it's, it's not going to be lined up here and then the, the underlying texture is going to be a mess. And you can actually add multiple UV maps and then control them independently. What we're gonna do is go into, with this object selected, this triangle tab, the data tab, underneath UV maps down here, you can actually hit the plus and make a new UV map. So we're gonna do that. And then to use it, we have to go back into the shader editor and just search for the UV map node. So when there's an image texture that doesn't have anything plugged into it, by default, it's actually going to take the original UV map as an input. That's what that's doing. We can override that by plugging in the new UV map node and then selecting the UV map right here, dot 001, that we just added. 
So I can open up the drop down here. That's the original one. This is the new one we just made. So I can click that. Nothing is going to change because it's just a duplicate of the original. So what it means now is I can actually go into edit mode. Let me switch this window to the UV editor, which is also up here just to full screen it so you can see, just get a bigger window. Okay, so I'm actually going to, if you scroll all the way over to the right here, you can see this drop down. Whichever one of these is selected here is the one that you're going to be editing in the UV editor, okay? So by default, when you add a new one, it's going to select the new one here. So that means we can just go in, U, unwrap, cube, project this really quick. Okay, and then that is now cube projected. So we are, again, sending that second UV map only to that code image. The first image of the base color of this model is unaffected. So if I just shine a light on this so you can kind of see what this looks like. The underlying main UV map is unaffected and the main texture is still going to be showing up fine. But we have independent control over that as well as the code image. If I, if I just turn off the overlays, you can see, make sure we have that second UV map selected here. And I can go in here and just move that around however I want. And it's only going to affect that texture. So I like bringing this up pretty high up so that you can't really read the text. If you can, if you can read it, it's uh, not that nice to look at. And it's also nonsense code. It doesn't actually mean anything. So anyone who knows what they're looking at is going to realize that it's just a stock image. So you want to avoid that. But around that big to where you can't really read it, but you can tell it's some sort of texture on there. That's kind of the ideal range, I find. Okay, so at this point, you might want to go in and adjust the brightness and also the layer weight fall off. So I'm going to use a map range at the very end of the chain here, right before it goes into the strength. This lets me set the minimum and maximum values. So I'm just going to turn up the maximum value to be very bright. That's the two max right here. We can bring that up. And then I like using a color ramp where the layer weight is going in here. Put that in right there and we can adjust the fall off of that. You can do that here. You can either set it to ease or B spline. Both of those will work. And B-Spline gets you like a really gradual fall off. I think Ease usually works best here. Um, so we can bring that up a little bit and then we can adjust the blend here as well. And that'll make it more or less bright or more or less close to falling off towards the edges. So something like that is nice. I kind of like where it's falling off almost to zero emission by the very center, but maybe you can see a tiny bit of it. Um, and that's gonna give you kind of like the nicest range uh, to look at here. Okay, so right now the emission color is just set to white. One thing that I like doing is taking the output of our underlying model, the, this default texture that it comes with, the Buddha texture. I'm gonna plug that or whatever texture your model comes with into the emission color. And now this is gonna take on the original color of the model. It's just gonna have that code emission as well. What I like to do here is take a hue saturation node and just drop the saturation. That already kind of makes it look more hologrammy, I find usually. And then we can customize the color even further by taking a mix color node, drop that after the hue saturation. Let's just clean this up a little bit down here. We can switch this to multiply and then turn up the factor, uh, set whatever color we want here, maybe turn up the brightness so it's not making it darker. And then let's adjust the map range to max value to make it brighter because that's gonna make it darker usually when you do that. And then that's a really nice way to customize the color. We have a little bit of the underlying original color coming through, but it's being colored blue and it gives you a really natural look. So you can make this whatever you want. Um, you don't have to make it blue. Uh, any different color will work here. Just depends what you want in your render. As a final step to really make this blend in with the rest of the environment, something I like doing sometimes is just dropping the alpha of the entire thing a little bit. So I'll just drop that to like 0.7 or 0.8. What that's gonna do is it's gonna let you see through it a little bit. So you can actually see the outside edges wrapping around a little bit on the curved surfaces. Um, and then also if you want, you can turn up the transmission a little bit too. This is not really to see through it. This is more to just kind of soften the way light is hitting it. Um, I find it just kind of softens it out overall, makes it look a little more hologrammy. You don't wanna do this too much. So like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, somewhere around there. And that's the shader. Okay, and then depending on what angle you're looking at it at, it's gonna change and that's kind of like the hologram look, you know. Uh, I like making this pretty bright to the point where it starts glowing from, if we go to the compositor tab, uh, I'm in cycles, but I have this glare node set to bloom, which you can do now in cycles. So as long as you have in the rendered view up here, uh, viewport shading, compositor set to either camera or always, 
you'll be able to see that compositor emission uh compositor glare node right here so i've just set mine to bloom and then change the settings a little bit that'll give you that really nice glowing on this okay so that's the shader right there and of course you can put this on whatever you want so you saw it on the fish on the people on the lanterns on whatever else i was putting it on and it's a really nice way to just spice up a, a, an emission an emission shader you know you can do other things like in this one i'm running the base color into a bunch of different things one of them being actually the alpha so there's actually a fish texture on here that's kind of driving this that's running through a color ramp and that's running into the alpha right here and that's what's controlling what is visible and what isn't so i found i found that that was just a cool look for this particular model but of course you can play around with that and customize it however you want different models are going to work differently so this is the base and you can take it from there okay if you want to see the full breakdown of this render that will be out on youtube uh within a couple days of me recording this you might be watching this at the time where it's already out in which case i will link it below this video in the description if you want to watch the full breakdown it's just on youtube for free and if you want step-by-step -step guides on making cyberpunk renders like this go and check out the course i've linked below that is the cyber environments course that i released at the beginning of this year so i highly recommend that if you want to learn how to make cyberpunk renders like this here Okay, thank you for watching and go and check out the full guide if you want to learn more about this specific render.